What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. I am really excited about this one. We finally have the vet like 95% of the way done. As you can see, I'm driving it, which makes me super happy. Feels really good to be back behind the wheel of my car. Um, me and Emma spent quite a while wrapping the car and this is our first time ever wrapping anything as you saw in our last video. Uh, I didn't take much video of the actual wrapping process because we were just learning and it would have been hours and hours that would have just turned into a time lapse and it wasn't really anything worth looking at. But in today's video, we are going to be going over the flaws and errors and problems with my wrap, which I wouldn't usually be excited about, but I'm excited to show you guys so you don't make the same mistakes that we did for the first time that you touch vinyl wrap. And also, because I'm gonna fix them. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna give you guys five things that we messed up and I'm going to show them to you and then I'm going to explain to you what to do to not make these mistakes. And every single mistake that I made or that we made, I guess, we made it and then as we made it, like as we made it, we were like, oh, we shouldn't have done that and we would have been able to fix it but it was just too late. Unfortunately, I measured it all out and I did not buy enough wrap. We had barely enough to finish. Like our last piece we were pulling off for the rear bumper, we pulled it off and we needed like 95 inches to be comfortable and it was a 92 inch piece and it was like, it barely worked, but we I just cut it way too close. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna be ordering 60 foot rolls from here on out. But yeah, we are on our way to the car wash right now because the car is filthy. I drove it to work the last couple of days. I've just missed it and really wanted to drive it. And it got kind of like lightly sprinkled on and the dust settled. And so the car and the wrap and everything is super disgusting. So we're gonna get to the car wash. We're gonna wash it. And then we're gonna go find a nice little quiet place to go check it out and uh, show you all the problems and get with it. So see you guys at the car wash. We just made it to the car wash. The car is filthy. I'm gonna get washed in. We got a little bit of a breeze so the audio is not gonna be the best. And it's kind of bad weather, but you know, it always rains after you wash your car. So, uh, let me just show you guys the car real quick so you can see how dirty it is, and uh, I'm gonna wash it. Car is super filthy, but we're gonna wash it. Got her all rinsed down and we're gonna head off. Alrighty guys, so unfortunately it is just way too windy out there. Let me show you. We got a storm coming in. So of course I wash my car right before a storm comes in, but you know, that's just how it goes. So I'm going to be uh, kind of explaining the different points from inside the car. And I already just went and took video of every little part that I wanted to explain. So I'm probably just gonna do kind of a voiceover but uh, the first one that I wanted to talk about is definitely your detailing and your prep work. If you look at the video I'm about to show you, you'll see the little bumps that are underneath the wrap on the rear hatch. I ended up buying a synthetic clay bar because that's all that I could find and I highly regret it. I'm not trying to bash anybody. Uh, some people like the synthetic clay bar, I'm sure. I saw some okay reviews on it, but honestly, it did not work for my application. So I tried it and it didn't take away all the little grit and grime, all the little issues, the little dirt that was still on the hatch. So if you check out this, you'll see all the little bumps I'm talking about. That was really frustrating to me. We ended up going and purchasing a clay bar kit. We found one. It worked a thousand times better. I didn't have any contaminants underneath the surface after that. So that was a little bit frustrating, but I would say one of the most important things would be your prep and your detailing. You gotta clean around every little edge. You've gotta clean every single part of the car, every single square inch where wrap is going to touch. It doesn't seem like it's as big of a deal, but it really is. So mistake number two is something that I thought I could get away with, and unfortunately I couldn't and this was disassembly. I thought that we could just wrap and we could just tuck underneath some stuff and tuck between some body panels and just get it done. And that does work on a lot of stuff and it definitely works on more uh, like commuter cars and 
stuff like that that has slightly larger body gaps. But unfortunately, the way the Corvette's designed and the way that it's so sleek and put together, there are a few spots like between the front bumper and the front fender and between the rear fender and the rear bumper where it was just such a smooth, clean body line that all we could really do was lay it and tuck it as best we could and slice it. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of red you can see in some spots. It's really frustrating, but I decided to disassemble about halfway through the wrap job, which has made everything way more difficult and way worse, but I couldn't get away from it. I had to do it. So if you see in the pictures and you saw in the last video, I had the front fenders off, front bumper off. We got to a point where we just couldn't pull the rear bumper and rear fenders. If it had been a customer car or we had more time, I definitely would have pulled those. But being my personal car and us getting our first job out of the way and needing to get the car back on the road, we just wrapped and tucked and we did a pretty dang good job. Emma did incredible in my opinion, but you know, some mistakes you just can't avoid. Disassembly. You may think you don't need to disassemble it, but you need to disassemble it. Before you wrap the car, take a look, write everything down, and look at every single thing you need to pull off, and spend a couple hours and disassemble the car. There's no smart way to get around it. The next one is a very difficult one to master, but very important. I haven't mastered it yet, but I got better and better each time I did it. The next one is inlay. You need to inlay quite a few things. There's a lot of stuff that this vinyl can stretch into, and it does really well, and the stuff conforms really well, but there's a lot of spots that I looked at and I thought, yeah, we can heat it, we can stretch it into there, we'll be okay, and we just weren't okay. Uh, if you look at the scoops on the sides of the fenders, that I thought that we could just lay over, heat it up, stretch it in, slice it, tuck it, call it a day. We could not, unfortunately. You can see where I ran out of room to grab and had my hands kind of in the vent and was pulling forward. It just ended up wrinkling. I ended up cutting it too short. I just didn't do it right. What you need to do is you need to inlay first. And you'll see I did it correctly on the door handle. That is a good inlay, it's good for a beginner. You need to go up around the body lines and basically right where the main wrap goes, right where it starts to curve around where you need to inlay, that's where you need to lay your knifeless tape and that's where you need to, to seam your inlay in. So I did better on the door handles. I've got some pictures of when I actually inlaid them before we wrapped the rest of the car. And it turned out a lot better. I had to do quite a bit of inlaying on the front bumper because it's just got so many crazy angles and shapes, I just couldn't get it all in one piece. We also had to seam and inlay the rear bumper too. So that's very important. You'll look at it and you'll say, eh, maybe I don't need to inlay it, I can probably get away with it, I don't have to do it, but you do. You really need to inlay it. If it looks like you might have to stretch it, just inlay it. It's a little bit more work beforehand, but it's just a much better product afterwards. The last two errors, are pretty similar because they both have to do with heat. When you're vinyl wrapping, heat is your best friend. There was a lot that we just couldn't do without heat. There was a lot that we were doing, like we did on one fender, and when we got to the other fender, we realized if we added heat, it just makes everything easier. Heat is amazing, unless you use too much. So I'll cut to a clip and show you, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but we overstretched. By we, I mean me. Emma was heating it up for me, and I was pulling, and I didn't know and I found the limitation of the wrap in a way that I didn't want to. I overstretched and you can see where the material thinned out and the red is starting to show through the blue more and so it creates kind of a dark spot and it changes the, the finish just a little bit, just enough that if you notice it, it bothers the heck out of you. So do not overstretch. This stuff can stretch a lot and it can do some crazy awesome things, but you can overstretch it. You need to learn the limitations of the material before you start laying it. Last but not least, post heating. I only heard about it in a few videos and it's a very, very, very important thing. 
I didn't do it on a few panels and we just forgot on a couple of panels, we will never forget again. Post heating is super important. When you heat up the material, it has a memory. So you can stretch it and rip it, well not rip it, you can stretch the material and kind of put indents in it and stuff. And when you go over with the heat, it kind of goes back and it has a memory and it sucks back and shrinks back into its smooth surface. So post heating or relaxing the material, you heat it up to a certain temperature and instead of shrinking and going back to where it was originally, it just gets kind of gooey and just relaxes and it doesn't shrink anymore. It just lays smooth. When you post heat, you make the material forget its original shape and you can lay it over edges, heat it, and then you won't have any peel back. We didn't post heat in a lot of spots and so when I took the car out into the sun and had it parked outside all day while I was at work, the material heated up and its memory came back and it shrunk and it pulled back around the edges. So that is a very, very, very important part. You need to heat the material and make it lose its memory so that it doesn't pull back when it sits in the sun and gets hot again. We just completely forgot. I knew about it. I did it on a few things and we just forgot on a lot of things. We won't be forgetting again. So those are the five errors that we made that were really big mistakes that I think aren't talked about enough. I know they are talked about, but as we were making these mistakes, we realized it and I just wanted to make this video so that other people that are thinking about wrapping their cars for the first time can see that and not make the same mistakes we did. This video isn't the best, I'm sorry, but it's super windy outside so it's just me blabbing away. But I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you learned something and I hope you like the wrap as much as I do. Uh, the car is 95% of the way done. I say that because there's a couple things that we missed which I'll go through and show you right now. got that rear diffuser that we have to do we've got a couple of things we need to patch up and on the mirrors I wrapped them all in one piece which I didn't think I was gonna be able to do I was really excited that it came out the way it did but we were trying to get the car ready to take it to a car meet so I just kind of shoved it I pulled the glass out and I shoved the wrap in around it put the glass back on and now the wrap has kind of stretched back it has gained its memory and peeled back so I need to go through I need to cut it and I need to seam that in and we are going to be plastic dipping the rear diffuser because it's just way too many angles and surfaces to try and wrap. So the rear diffuser will be black, the mirrors are going to get wrapped, and all the lights are going to get smoked, and then the car will be 100% done on the outside with the wrap, and it'll look incredible. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching the Two Bros Performance YouTube channel. I hope you made it this far into the video. If you did, thank you so much. Please give it a like, comment what you think. If you don't like me blabbing, if you don't want to see videos like that, comment. If you do, comment. Tell us what you think. Give us feedback. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a lot. Please share this video with any other friends that you think might be interested. Have them subscribe if they're interested in finding out more about wrapping and seeing more awesome automotive content. Thank you guys again. Hope to see you in the next one. We will see you later. Stay motivated. Stay hungry. Peace.